Welcome back. In studios, we have Dr. Philip Castillo, economist and lecturer at the University of Belize. So thanks for joining us to talk about sugar. Thank you. So Dr. Castillo, culturally, this is the time for us to be baking for the holidays. Christmas is coming up as well as New Year's, so the pastry industry is booming. So we would like to know your opinion on the sugar scarcity. Well, Sean has explained to us the reason why. We have huge countries to the north and um, north and south of us, which large populations buying substantially greater quantities of sugar. Um, Guatemala's population is around 16 or 17 million. Mexico's population is well over 100 million. And what we're hearing from Sean is that those countries, um, the, the sugar production fell in those countries and then they're demanding sugar, and they're making it up from contraband products from Belize. Um, I see that as a huge problem, but in the short run, there's very little that Belize can do, because if there's an incentive for Belizean sugar to be sold in Guatemala and Mexico, I see that continuing. Okay, so as an economist, do you see a chance for BSI and sugar producers to collaborate with relevant authorities to address the reported sugar activity? Well, I am, from what I'm hearing, to the best of my knowledge, BSI is already collaborating with the government, meaning that um, BSI would inform government about the quantities being produced, and government knows that. But what needs to happen, I would think, is that, as BSI noted, um, for sugar to be contrabanded effectively, basically, you have to move in bulk. It makes no sense to move very small quantities of sugar. So then, I would think that BSI has to be authorized to retail sugar in smaller packages, and that makes it more difficult to move. Now, obviously, that has a cost component. So as we were told earlier, the cost of sugar in Belize is artificially very low. That has to change. So there has to be a change in the price of sugar for there to be any meaningful situation, um, any meaningful moves to adjust the current situation. Okay, so everyone thus far is talking about the price and the price increase. So who would ultimately be in charge of increasing the price of sugar? Well, consumers pay all final price increases. It goes back to the consumer because the current price, it's a controlled price. And the aim of price controls is to keep prices artificially low for the consumer. Sugar features a whole lot in Belize's what we call the basket of goods and services that measure inflation. Sugar is a major component in that basket. So obviously if the price of sugar changes, then the basket changes, then inflation in Belize changes. But then that has to happen because what's happening is that with the price being kept artificially low, then the supplies are non-existent. So the only way to make the supplies available locally is to increase prices. Okay, so let's say the sugar price does increase. How might these adjustments impact government revenues or GST? There's bound to be an impact. Um, sugar, I think, won't impact GST or government revenues because I don't think sugar pays GST, meaning that um, there are some products that are zero rated, mm -hmm. and I think sugar would be zero rated. So that shouldn't impact GST. Um, what it would impact, though, is that sugar is an input in a broad range of products. You started it by speaking about pastries and the other goodies and so Sugar is an input in that. Those pay GST. So it means that, yes, GST would increase. GST would, um, the take from GST would increase because um, these products are now being produced with sugar, which costs more. Okay, so your professional opinion, we would love to know what recommendations or policy you would recommend to, to solve the sugar scarcity. You want, you want government response to be grounded in economics. What I've been hearing is that they want to put the BDF on the border, or to add to the responsibilities of the BDF on the border to assist in minimizing or reducing contraband. Um, I do not see that as a sustainable solution. What I see as a sustainable solution is that you increase the price of the commodity. Um, and then 
with government's increased intake of revenue from that commodity, government can then ensure that sugar becomes a part of the pantry. Right now, government provides a pantry to Belizeans who are below the poverty rate, the poverty level. So you could include sugar in that pantry. In that way, the price goes up, but then the Belizeans who could afford the price pay the increased price, and those who can't, then government would subsidize them by putting sugar as a part of the current pantry that it provides to persons who are below the poverty line. Okay, so let's say that GOB considers purchasing sugar from our neighboring CARICOM countries and we would resell it to Guatemala and Mexico, hypothetically speaking. Um, what would be the implications if this were to happen? Well, I wouldn't want to go that far because as BSI has told us, the quantities of sugar they produce can supply the local market. So based thereon, Belize would not want to import sugar from anywhere else because importing sugar would be a strain on our scarce foreign exchange. We can produce sugar, we are producing sugar. What we want to do is to ensure that the sugar we are producing in Belize, there's sufficient amount for Belizeans. And that is possible with a change in economic policies. Okay. So what do you propose to prevent similar occurrences of the sugar market? You have to focus on price. The price has been kept artificially low for too long, and that has to change. Um, when you change a price that has been kept artificially low for such a long period of time, they are likely to be losers. And then government now has to find a way to assist those losers, particularly those that are poor. So from both of our interviewees right now, they both agreed that the price needs to increase in order for us to prevent the sugar scarcity as well as meet the local demand. This conversation has been good, but we do need to take a break. So thank you gentlemen for joining us and let's see what the new year brings to the sugar industry. When we return, we will be joined by Ms. Janine Hamilton with another segment of Tech Bites.